Ah, oh, look at this happy scene, air-cooled vehicles everywhere. But this one is not air-cooled. It's an electric Fiat 500. So let's take a closer look. Well, technically, if you're a pedant, it, it is air-cooled still, but it's air-cooled electric motor. That's mounted at the back. We'll take a look in a moment. Uh, it's got three battery packs in it from a Tesla, um, Tesla cells, two in the back and one at the front. So it's got something approaching weight distribution. Um, and if you look under the nose here, there is your charge point. Well, a great deal of it is actually completely hidden. So you can see the main isolator switch down here. Um, that's the cooling for the, um, I think that's the charger. You've got the battery pack on top and the motor will be buried underneath. It's a 60 brake horse motor, I believe, although it's currently in a testing mode. So it's only unleashing 60% of that, which is still a lot more than the 20 horsepower this would have had when brand new. And I think that's 20 horsepower um, as an SAE figure. I don't think that's your DIN. So um, total battery capacity is 15 kilowatt hours. Um, so yeah, that should get you a good way down the road. If we look inside, To be honest, it all looks pretty standard. Uh, you'll note the one big difference is throttle pedal. Um, it's probably out of a Toyota Prius. That's what they tend to fancy. But um, instant electric pedal makes life an awful lot easier. Uh, we do also seem to have two keys and a little readout to tell you battery condition, um, what mileage you've got left, etc. Uh, gearbox is the standard Fiat unit, so that's a non synchro mesh four speed, but you shouldn't need any gears really. Uh, I think we'll be putting it in third gear, and that will be that. Uh, we shall have a quick peek under the frunk. So here we go in your front mounted trunk, no fuel. Um, tank of course so there's actually a reasonable amount of storage space in here and one of the battery packs is down here at the front that's it slotted down there so that is one pack out of a tesla and you can see the um rather necessary high voltage cabling there you certainly don't want to be using skinny wires for that job so predicted range probably somewhere around the 55 to 70 sort of area, which is probably enough really. I wouldn't recommend one of these for continental cruising because it is still a Fiat 500. Right, so I've just had a bit of a familiarization run. Um, we're now gonna have a little bomb around the streets of Flannied Lois and um, we'll see how it feels. So the procedure for starting this vehicle is you turn the ignition on, that red light comes on. This is a separate barrel, ignore that. That's still got the steering lock. We're not bothering with that, that will be removed. Um, the little control says we've got 70% battery. We had 82 when we left, but I must admit, I then drove it flat out for a bit. Pedal position is quite odd. The clutch is right up against the transmission. The brake is up in the air and the throttle pedal out of a Prius, as I suspected, is over here on the right. And um, yeah, it, it's easier just to drive with both feet because you don't need the clutch pedal. Um, you just um, accelerate and brake. So um, we shall put it in second gear because we're in town and um, use third out on the road and um, we're ready to go. There you go. You don't get acceleration like that in a normal Fiat 500. Overtake the mobility scooter, because that's how much power we've got. And um, yeah, this is absolutely ideal for bombing around little towns. I might have been a bit more than 30, that was a bit naughty. But um, yeah, this is even uphill. Fiat 500s don't do this. Imagine what this is gonna be like once it's running at 100%. So come to a stop, my left foot is on the brake, I'm not touching the clutch. Checks clear and away we go.
Oh, this is hilarious. This is utterly transformative because I think the Fiat 500, and uh, I may get some hate for this, I think it's a dreadful car. I don't think they're very nice to drive. I'm gonna go for third now. Oh, crunch. Non-synchromesh gearbox, you can't rev match with an electric motor. And we'll get out on the open road a bit more. So in third gear, performance is more sluggish. But um, still beats a Fiat 500 by quite some margin. Of course you hear all the bumps and rattles a bit more because there's no engine noise. Normally in a Fiat 500 there would be really loud engine noise. And um, Fiat 500, whoa, we are accelerating uphill. That's just not what you expect in a Fiat 500. I'm having to hold back a Fiat 500 uphill, who knew? to almost 50 I think this feels pretty blooming quick for a Fiat 500 so um, Richard who converts the cars has had to upgrade the rear drive train so the um, it's got beefed up drive shafts to handle the extra torque, but it's still the standard gearbox, which seems to be having no problems so far. In terms of brakes, it's got a front disc conversion, which is very, very sensible. But otherwise it's still servo free, which makes the conversion relatively easy. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm feeling my lack of power a bit on the hills. That's feeling about akin to the 2CV, to be honest, on that level of gradient. Again, wouldn't be an issue at 100%. But yeah, you, because the motor's so smooth, you don't have that feel, even though my foot is on the floor at the moment, you don't get that feel of stress. You don't feel like you're overworking anything. There is a heater, I'm going to turn it on because it is a little on the chilly side. Not as chilly as when I had the roof back earlier, that was a really bad idea. This is a lot of fun. I've driven other vehicles converted by electric classic cars before. Uh, a Volkswagen Beetle in one of them. You can find the video on that. And it, it feels very well engineered. Yeah, braking is odd. I think braking is better done with your left foot. So, you know, how important is an engine for the classic car experience? That's the key question. And um, here I am, having a nice drive in the countryside in a classic car, and I'm having fun. It's making some whining noises, as a classic car transmission always will. Does it feel lacking for the lack of an engine? And the, the simple answer is no. This feels lovely. In terms of costs, um, I will get a figure from um, Richard, but um, yeah, it has to be said, these, these things don't come cheap. Tesla batteries are not cheap. The motors and controllers are still not cheap. So sadly for people like me, this is actually unattainable at the moment. 
why I'm savouring the experience. Oh, it's now raining. Put my faith in tiny wipers. And they are tiny. This car is still running at 60% because it's still in debug mode. Um, every conversion understandably needs um, a bit of a shakedown period to go through and make sure everything works. Right, I'm not going to do a 0 to 60, but I can do a 0 to um, 50 or 0 to 70 kilometers. And uh, we are all systems go. Fifty miles an hour. I'm just going to keep my foot down. Remember, this is at sixty percent of power available, so it's like doing an acceleration test, but not putting your foot all the way down. And all this stuff is scalable, so you can control the amount of power that's available. You can have an eco mode if you fancy, but would throttle it back and boost regen. Uh, that can all be programmed into it. But this is the main thing, we're up to about 90 kilometers an hour now. And um, on the flat, it'll just sit there all day, no bother. Rather more peacefully than the original Fiat 500, it must be said, all I'm noticing really is a bit of transmission whine and um, a considerable amount of wind noise, most of which is coming from this exterior mirror, I think, which is an aftermarket item as far as I can work out. But if this is to be the future, the one way we get to enjoy cars, you know, and I'm, I'm not talking immediately, there is no way fuel is going to vanish overnight, but, you know, 20 years down the line, this might be what we have to do. Go for a gear change. There we go. Just have to take your time with these non-synchro gearboxes. But yeah, I wouldn't try downshifting back to second. Yeah, try that again. I wouldn't try downshifting to second because I can't blip the throttle in the same way. It's a bit more difficult with an electric motor. It'll just spin straight up. It is doing nothing to dim my love of electric. I do like electric vehicles. I like the power delivery. I mean, this is like driving an automatic now, but a really good automatic. And, um, oh, this road looks fun. Oh no, we have got another cattle grid first. There you go, it's 90 kilometers an hour. I think that's probably 100. That feels quite fast, to be honest, in a Fiat 500. Well, that was very enjoyable. What a fantastic little car. Um, definitely one of those cars where an electric motor has a lot more to offer than the original internal combustion engine. If this was a Steyr Puck with the air-cooled flat twin, similar to what Tuck's got, I'm not sure I would agree with that, Tuck being my little Invercar. Um, but um, this is all feeling good, and um, yeah, I, it would be very interesting to try one at maximum power. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is not trying to be a Tesla or a Jaguar I-Pace. It's not trying to be a serious performance machine, but it does have usefully more performance than the standard car. Sure, if you're planning on going on hundreds of mile journeys, then this isn't going to be the car for you. A range of 50 to 70 miles, and you're looking at a six hour charge time to go from completely empty to full. And um, I don't think you can use rapid charges on motorways either. So it's not a distance machine, but for bombing around, um, going to local shows, going to town, um, absolutely ideal, I love it. So yeah, th these conversions are still not cheap, but then some very good engineering in them. Um, but um, yeah, fascinating stuff.
and it's been very interesting to try one a few years on from the original Beetle I drove. Uh, anyway, there you go. That was the Fiat 500 electric. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. Don't forget to come to Wales. Look, it's lovely. This is near Llany Lois. And um, yeah, I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Pickable.